it finally happened, people. Right after so long, Nintendo said, people are, they want these damn N64 games on our Nintendo Switch online system. Let's actually give it to them. It does have a catch because it is going to come at a higher cost. It is also going to include Sega Genesis games. I think a lot of people would have preferred uh, N64 and GBA. I think I would be on that boat, but I yep. thought it would be pretty cool to just put out the initial list because like they did say eventually we'll get Paper Mario, Majora's Mask, but Nintendo, when they say at a later date, Nintendo can say that and be like, 20 years from now <laughs> like they can go to great extremes it took us four years to get bluetooth on the switch people so anything is possible so well i'm just gonna list out the initial launch lineup uh which is available around this time already as you're uh, listening or watching so we have super mario 64 mario kart 64 star fox 64 a lot of 64 yoshi's story uh, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Win Back, which is a surprising thing there that I actually played. Uh, Mario Tennis, Dr. Mario 64, and then Sin and Punishment, was a, which is a Japanese game that I believe is also available on the Nintendo Wii because it's like a rail shooter. And considering the fact that we've waited, because for, from the very first time that, 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 that Nintendo said we're getting classic games, people were like, give me Mario. Give me all of this, right? People wondered, how come you're getting rid of the Mario Trilogy? We knew it would eventually lead to this. Having talked about the lineup, what do you guys think of it? It's definitely less exciting, the fact that the Super Mario Trilogy came out before it. The fact that a lot of people own Mario 64 now, and then they're throwing it on the system because it would be a huge thing. Like, oh, we can finally play Mario 64 on the Switch. Well, we can already do that. But all of that aside, I think this is the perfect way. Like, this Nintendo Switch online service that they've built is the perfect way to consume these N64 games that have been so rare uh, for so long. Like, yes, I, I understand they've been on a couple of virtual consoles, but the commitment to play something like that was still high because you had to purchase them individually. Now for this subscription, whatever it may be, you get things like Star Fox 64 and Mario Tennis and Dr. Mario 64 that you can just turn on, play, enjoy for a little bit and be like, okay, I'm good for a bit. And just do that with all of the games while still having those those uh, those bangers like uh, Ocarina of Time there holding it down and Mario 64 if you never purchased the, um, the uh, All-Stars All -Stars. collection. So... I love the fact that N64 is finally accessible for somebody like me that wouldn't do it through emulation, and it's great that it exists, and I hope, hope Nintendo doesn't find a way to screw it up by just taking their sweet time like they tend to do and they releasing will. games they slowly, will. very slowly, very slowly. The moment that I saw at a later date, and it's like, when, when they showed some of the feature games, I'm thinking, some people see that as a good thing. I see that as a problem. I see that yeah. as, hey, we're, we're, getting, we're giving you the game you want. We're just not telling you when. Which is bullcrap, because they already have the damn they, game. They can still <laughs> show you the graphics saying, hey, we're going to release this. We just can't tell you when. Ugh. And of course, another caveat. You can buy for $50 the wireless Nintendo 64 controller to play these games, because we know... N64 games don't really map quite as well on other controllers. So. Not with those Joy-Cons. Super yeah, Mario 64 with the Joy-Con. Yeah, that was, I used uh, the Pro. That was yeah. something. Yeah, you generally... Uh, yeah, you want the, the N64 controller. Yeah, it's, it's very strange because we have Mario 3D All-Stars, which I did play through the whole Mario 64 on that version. I think it's fine. And I just don't know, like, these aren't going to be, like, upscaled to look as good as the 3D All-Stars version, right? Yeah, because and, keep in mind, it, yeah. it's essentially ports. It's just it's, emulated. Yeah. yeah, like, you and I, you know, it, in the podcast, we've talked about, like, Ocarina. Well, there's a 3DS version. So the problem when you bring the N64 over, right? It's like Star, Star Fox 64 has a version on Nintendo 3DS. So 
it's a weird scenario where you're getting the game that you played growing up, but there's a there's a better version that fixes a lot of stuff. Like Ocarina on Nintendo 3DS, the thing that I loved about it is you can actually like uh, kind of aim with the with the handheld, and it's perfect. Yeah. And that would work mm-hmm. pretty good on Switch, but instead we get the OG version. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure we'll get the same version we got on the virtual console, not the original like gold cartridge version because they changed some of this stuff uh, in Ocarina. But I think what's most disappointing to me, although technically 3D All-Stars could be a sign of things, but I was hoping for an upscaled 3DS version to come to Switch for Ocarina of Time. And this feels like it hurts the chances but like I said, at the same time, they did do Mario 3D All-Stars with a different version of Mario 64. They'll happily sell you it again. Come yeah. on now. Well, of that's course. what I honestly think I'm probably going to skip this because I, you know how many copies of Ocarina of Time I have? And I have Mario 3D All-Stars. Unless somehow like Mario Kart 64 Online just kicks that much ass, <laughs> I, I don't see myself. <laughs> needing to get this i honestly like i have tennis online is where it's at i'm so excited to play mario tennis online i actually like more i was a big i was a bigger fan of like the earlier mario tennis games as opposed to the later ones that became a lot more outrageous so i do think that's good like I actually am looking forward to them adding some obscure games like Winback, like some shooters, like Blast Core. They did show Bando Kazooie, so obviously Goldeneye will never come out for this, but it does open up the box for other like rare games and other like look. We can get Perfect Dark, hopefully. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully. And look, like even with Smash, I think Smash has shown Nintendo has partnered up pretty well with a lot of different companies that you can look at that and say like oh i think they can pull this game together and all that they they showed uh, f-zero i barely played that version but I, i'm a pretty big fan now of f-zero never even played those games till like a couple of years ago i do think the fact that at the end of the day N- nintendo switch is a handheld hybrid device and i think it's going to be a nice way to celebrate these th- these games and to this day the wii u still is like subjectively the best nintendo console as yeah. far as if you want to celebrate nintendo not necessarily wii u it's the best legal way to do it because you got gba and from the looks of it look i don't think we're getting i don't think we're getting gba at this point because considering the lifespan well, we of the will. switch at a later date oh it's frustrating yeah, consider though. i know it's already been four years and it's ridiculously slow which is why i bought a wii u like three years ago and I don't regret it at all. And I already have a bunch of these games between the physical copies and the Wii U. I already have all these games. So the biggest the biggest benefit to me is those obscure titles that I wouldn't otherwise try. And, you know, games that, you know, we didn't get in the U.S. Like, um, you know, you mentioned Sin and Punishment, although I guess we got the Wii U version. And then Banjo-Kazooie is big. Of course, if you do have like the Xbox Live version, it's actually a better version of it. but um for nintendo to have banjo kazooie back that is a big deal and that is a fantastic game i I think to like to summarize my thoughts about it and you kind of said it now is like for the most part a lot of these games there are better versions of there are there's a better version of ocarina there's a better version of Star Fox. right we already had a version of super mario 64 and when i say better it's like look it's not saying that any of these are bad it's just there have been revised versions that have either fixed up or added something that you probably should add. Like, look, if any of you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest you look at any 3DS game like emulated as far as like upscaled. Man, those games like look freaking awesome. And then I'm thinking, man, port some of that 3DS stuff. A lot of them will work just fine. Hey, we really hope you enjoyed this podcast clip. And if you did, guess what? You can listen to the full episode right now by searching for Quest Rewind on your favorite podcast app, including Spotify. And while you're at it, follow us over there so you never miss a new episode.